Don, what did you do? The mean green machine is like all the parts. Parts and pieces everywhere. Parts, 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 like Christmas time. Yeah, it's like Christmas time. Hanging them up on the tree. More parts here. I had to, I had to just put a little bit of the paint on the table here just to see. So here's the color we're going. Kind of hard to see the metallic in it, but it's got some high metallic. It's gonna be a pretty cool color. It's the mean green machine. Getting ready to get, we're gonna, since all the parts take up so much space, we're gonna go ahead and paint the parts first. And then, clean up the chassis, paint the frame next, and uh, time to assemble. So are you getting ready to put the green to it? Green or green? A little water on the floor. Put some epoxy, self-etching epoxy primer. And the green bean machine will be green. Yeah. Next time you see it, it will be green. We've we'll already got all the parts finished. And a nice green. This is a lime high metallic. Alright, so you can use a gasket or you can just use RTV, which is our preferred method. If you get it around the bolt real good, that'll that'll really eliminate any any place for it to start dripping. Just line it up, put it the right direction, drop it in. I don't think you have a choice though. I think it only goes one way. Hold up on that side of it if it needs it. <laughs> All right, so on the nine inch, putting the axles in, the way it comes, you gotta press the bearings on. Get down, getting the bearings pushed on. Put a piece of wood in there so we don't smash Curry's name. Curry wouldn't be happy. But it gets Curry axles. That definitely makes life easier. So the axles we use are universal. Ford bolt pattern, uh, four and three quarter or four and a half, you can have um, a Chevy bolt pattern. Four and three quarters, five on four and three quarters. Okay, so we caught Don playing horseshoes. <laughs> you playing horseshoes here? Yeah. <laughs> Line hole up. Line hole up. So, figure it out. Yeah. This is called figure it out, huh? So we're putting the disc brakes on the back of the uh, nine inch here. Got the axles pushed in. Everything got the collar on. I don't know if the video is going to help somebody on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Get it going. You want the brakes aiming to the back. Right. So. They've already had it to the front. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> so you figured out that wasn't right. Yeah. So there'll be a. And this isn't a left and a right. This would be a flip it over situation. Right. Looks like it's how it goes, kinda. I don't think it is though. No, it's, no, it needs to go back. Uh, we'll come back after you get this <laughs> a little more figured out. All right, should we ask them? You know, everybody that watches YouTube has an opinion. I, I hear a lot of them. So, Don wants to know, we got enough shims in there. It looks like it, when you tighten that up, that's gonna yeah. work. Yeah. And then it's leaning back. That leans back pretty far, but that's how it goes, isn't it? I just got these stuck in there holding it. Yeah. Get my... All right, well, I like it. I know more about it now than I did. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've done it more than a couple times, but every time I go to sleep, I wake up and it's a brand new day. i got to remember it all again. Yeah. I hand it over here first. Yeah, that's not right. All right, so we'll get the other side on and the mean green machine coming together, the Model A chassis. Uh, chassis for, uh, it's gonna go under a sedan. All right, so what's the old saying? If it was easy, everybody would do it? Everybody be doing it. So we got our rear end, nine inch. Everything's new, but of course the axle don't fit. It's a little bit long, which it is what it is. So we're gonna have to cut a little bit off. Um, 
just gets aggravating when parts don't fit. But it's just something something to do. You need something to do, so now you got something to do. Uh, we are actually thinking about having axles made and doing it all, getting it in house. Right now, it's the problem is we've got to go to too many vendors to get the same thing and. Supply chain is messed up. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so it looks like Don's got the axle shortened up just a little bit, don't we? We are batting 100 right now. Brakes are on? Yes, sir. We ready to put her up under the car? Ready to bleed the brakes. Bleed the brakes. Maybe we ought to plumb it first. Yeah, that might help. So step one would be lay out all the parts. Make sure they're all in mass all there ready to go take the inventory and then get yourself a game plan so we got most of the actual parts here a lot of the rods and all that are still ready to go so we'll just take it one bite at a time and start assembling uh, the axle here i'm going to start with uh, we're going to call them the bat wings here now these face to the inside of the axle of the axle here i've got the shackle I want to put the shackle with the nut side to the back of the car so I'm going to add them in right here and then this side will go into the spring up here. So I'll go ahead and get them put in first. I started by putting all the bushings in both sides. Put the bushings in the spring. And I go ahead and just push the shackle in. There is a left and a right bracket. Uh, you can tell from the way they're angled. So we want it angled like this when it's on the uh, on the axle because the four bars are going to angle towards the frame. And we set them all the way out to the end here. So this is a spring over. So the axle is going to be sitting directly over the or the spring is going to be sitting directly over the axle. So we'll go ahead and set those parts in. And and put the bat wings on it. So we definitely have lots of rods that we need to put bushings in. They're for the four links, they're pan hards, they're steering rods, all kinds of stuff. So um, match everything up and put it together. I don't see any instructions for it, or I'd show you. Super Bell makes some pretty nice instructions, but uh, they must have figured we don't need instructions around here, so they probably got thrown away when we were painting it. All right, so we got all our rods, four bars for the front. Pan hard for the front, pan hard for the rear, our steering arm, and our drag link, and this is our four link for the rear. So we got everything together, and now we're ready to just start assembling. So once you get the bracket on, in place, put the lower shock bracket in. These have both got beveled edges on both sides. It did take a little bit of persuasion to get it down in there. Carefully, you don't chip your paint, just stay on this thing. I use a, I actually use a tube to kind of push it down a little bit. And uh, we'll get this lined up, tighten down, and move on. So we need to push the bearing adapters on. So it's kind of handy to have a press to do that. You can see the bearing adapter needs to go down to the bottom. So we have this spindle assemb assembled. Just some bolts in the top for the brake kit or the brake bracket. Uh, the lower arm on this one, since it gets crossed here, is going to have two holes on the right side. Then over here on the left side, you'll just have one hole for the lower steering arm. The top just bolts on for the bracket. So spindles are ready to go. Looks like Don is about to uh, run out of parts. Well, Looks like Don is about run out of bushings to put in, so are we about to assemble? We're closer than we've ever been. <laughs> closer than we've ever been, okay, there you go. Next step is to get the axle up there. Instead of U-bolts, we weld this uh, bracket on, so it's just got a piece that holds the spring up underneath. The front of the spring where the screw is, that's what holds all the springs together. Just bolt it on. Now we can go ahead and put the four link together. Not everybody's got a port of power. And Daryl didn't must not have had a port of power. 
Oh, chase look at this. We got, so this is why we're in the state of affair we're in in this country. Because all us old guys are just about gone. And the young guys, who knows this trick? I didn't know this trick I've been doing. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Hey, I, I could use the, the bottom one too. All of them are a little bit tight. And over there too. Wow, Daryl, you're the man. Well, when you don't have tools, you when make tools. you don't tools. have tools, exactly. If you look in my toolbox, which is open to everybody for years, my, my homemade tools are a lot of them missing. But yeah, sometimes you just make your own tools. You do what you got to do. So, like hey, that. while you're here, <laughs> get, get them all. So I'm glad you came over. That's a good tip. So now we got, to, well, how are we going to title this one? This was actually, a, this Darryl's, is a, Daryl's tip of the day. Well, that, that, doesn't, do that. that doesn't rhyme. No. Doesn't work. Well, cool. There you go. So when you don't have the power support of power, and you're not an old body man from years ago, uh, just grab a couple of wrenches. Doesn't you know? May scratch a little bit on the inside, but you're going to put the piece there. It's not going to matter. It's actually, been quite a few years since I've assembled the front end on a I beam axle, but. Uh, one of the things you might want to remember, once you get it in over, put on the backside first, I put it in, then I swung it over. It's not got a left-handed, right-hand thread like your panhard rods and that would have, where you just twist the rod and it's gonna either both go out or both go in. Um, so you need to adjust this to make sure it goes into the into the bracket, because so this is not adjustable on this side. So just be aware of that. So you would want to start putting them in here. Washers in the back. We're good in the front. You got the collar there. Um, all right, I went ahead and put on all four bars for the four bar setup. At this point, I really don't tighten anything down unless I can't get at it again. I just want to get it all set up there. And uh, then I'll just methodically go through the whole thing and make sure it's all tight. But uh, I mean, everybody does it a little bit different. That just happens the way that I do it. And we'll move on to the shocks next. We've installed the front shocks. All with the right bolts and everything. Our next step is installing the kingpins. And you can see the notch in the kingpin here, right here. That's going to have to line up with that hole as it comes down. There's a keeper that actually goes in. You can kind of see and that presses in, and right now I can't push it anymore because I've got the kingpin in there, but when it gets to this notch, that's what holds it in on this uh, I beam out still here. So we'll go ahead and install the spindles next. So as I put it together, there's a bearing and the bearing goes on the bottom. You can see I've got it placed in there, holds the gap. So I'm ready to put the kingpin down in there now. So I've got my four bars on, I got my spindles on. I got the keeper, drove into the the hole and it gets a little nut on the back side of it. When you put your king pin down, potentially you need might need a washer and they're real, real thin. Uh, so this one on this side happened to need one. I have very rarely needed them. They're already tight, they're not wore out, they're brand new. I've got my shock sitting on there. So now it's time to put a pan hard rod on to go up underneath. Bracket attaches to where the four link is going to be and then the other bracket is welded on the frame already and then put the drag link on so we've installed the pan hard rod now it's only adjustable on one end so it's solid on the on the frame side but the axle side is adjustable so make sure you're kind of lined up where you want to be and, and get it in there a pile of rods is going down so next we're going to put the drag link on now your drag link we use ball joints on the big cars, on the 32 Model A and the 34 frames, and set of rod ends on the end. So this is a left hand and a right hand thread. So keep the thread length about the same, so when you twist it, they both go in at the same time and both go out at the same time. So once you get the drag link on, you can see I've got quite a bit of adjustment. Make sure you got jam nuts on everything, of course. So when I turn it, I'm gonna go either in or out on both sides. So if I turn it this direction, they're both going out, which will make it toe in more. If I go this direction, they'll both go in, which will make it toe out more. 
so we'll worry about our alignment uh, after we get everything together. All right, so we're kind of doing the manhandle for putting the brakes or the uh, shocks on the rear end. That middle hole. Top. One middle hole right there. Go down a little bit more. All right. Look at it. One in. The bolt. Pinion angle. Two in. Uh, so once we put the shocks on, we went and uh, put a little bit closer to the ground and put the pan hard rod on to stabilize that rear end. Otherwise, that frame will just flop over on you. You can kind of see there's two brackets. One bolts to the um, the front of the rear end of the differential, and one bolts to the housing. Put the pan hard through there and use a spacer. Your only adjustment is on this end over here. So you want to try to get that right the first time, but you can't adjust it like the front pan hard. Just twist one way and they both go in and twist the other and they both go out. So now it's time to hook up the four bar. Installing the four bar in the rear is, is pretty straightforward. Um, you, you're going to want to make sure your pinion angle is at three degrees. Um, set everything pretty equal. You got a rod that's uh, welded on on this side over here though, so you can't adjust that. It only adjusts on the, on the forward side. As best as possible, try not to bind or, or you know, just uh, wedge things in. Get it lined up, put it together. Just a little bit of advice, if, if it's possible to have a buddy help you out. Um, it's kind of after hours here, everybody's left, and uh, so I was kind of on my own, but kind of moving and wedging and getting that rear end into place uh, to put these bars in it was a little bit of a pain. Uh, doesn't hurt once you get it up there to stick a screwdriver or a drift punch in there to, to kind of line up the holes, put them in. I went and put the, the bolts from the inside pushing it out because there's just not enough room to really tap them in and they do need to, I'm not talking about beating them in, but tap them in to get them through. Got lock nuts on everything. So the rear end is just about together. I don't have anything tight, but I will systematically go through everything here and tighten it up. Now I need to go ahead and uh, finish up the front end. I need to get my rotors on. So we put the front rotors on. I just put the calipers on without the brakes in it. Uh, nothing is tightened up yet, but pretty much what you see is a Model A rolling chassis. Sphere cars, we built the, uh, built the frame here. We used Pete and Jake's on some of the suspension part as a super bell front axle. Um, the back, what you see here is off a 32. Uh, we made that, but you can put a 32 gas tank on it. A sedan is going to go on this chassis, a Model A sedan. But uh, disc brakes on the rear end, 9 inch rear end, 4 bar in the front and the rear. Everything, uh, everything new. So it wasn't that complicated. I built a couple over the years, but I probably haven't put one together for maybe three or four years. And of course, we didn't have the instructions when they painted it. They figured we don't need the instructions, so that got thrown away for the front and the back and everything. But uh, we've we put plenty of them together. Uh, Super Bell, I believe, does have pretty good instructions, or at least a a, uh, a breakout of the of the parts uh, for the front. And the same for the back. I'm not sure. We make a lot of the back parts here. Um, so I know our instructions are, well, right here. We have a video. So it's the mean green machine. <laughs>